handsome man sitting with me so it has to be about love I don't I can't even count how many times I have women inbox me message me and ask me about my love story so today we are getting into how to be healed to love again you guys this is gonna be juicy so do like we do grab your notebooks grab your pens and get ready to jot some stuff down but before we do that let's go over the four pillars life pillars of our show we believe in lifting as we climb turning our trials into treasures living a life to inspire and not impress and allowing god to fully restore us that includes our love life hey babe hey Listen, y'all, when we first got together, we started this one for you, one for me, and one for us. There is like this toxic thought that a woman, like a happy wife, happy life, but we understand that it takes both of us being happy in order for love to fully flourish and fully, you know, be all that God intended for it to be. So today I invited my amazing husband, Paul Thomas on the episode for a couple of reasons. Five years ago, nearly to the day, y'all, he inboxed me. He slid into them DMs. Y'all know how they be doing. He slid into my DMs and he asked me out on a date. And he wasn't the first guy to slide into my DMs, but there was something very different about the way he approached me and how he came at, at me. So I decided to kind of look further into it and we started this texting and talking. Two weeks later, we went out on our first date. That was a disaster. Uh, terrible. <laughs> terrible, should we start there? Should we kind of start, start there with Heal to Love Again yeah. and give them the real? Because I like talking about the root and not just the fruit. Let's give them the real. What was your, first of all, why did you slide into them DMs? Uh, I slid into those DMs. <laughs> DM, not DMs. Okay, cl <laughs> clarify, sir. <laughs> um, it was actually, I've been seeing her around, you know, on Facebook. Um, but at the time, I wasn't ready to approach her. Um, there was still some healing that was taking place in my life. Um, over a period of time that I have noticed her um, and then from there um, just one day happened to open up my phone had this little intimacy with God and um, and sure enough it was like okay Lord if this is you then I'm gonna give it a shot and I shot my shot and I say he did the rest. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny, babe? I, I don't think we did. Maybe we did this on purpose or maybe not that blue dress. Oh, it was the, so we have on blue. We got on blue. We got on Actually, blue that today. Wasn't intentional. Yeah. Well, that was not intentional. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I so, know you say God told you. Yeah. So it was a. <laughs> Let's keep first, it. Let's so, keep it one hundred. So, so you get to see it through the eye gate first. That's it, <laughs> sir. <laughs> and then after that, it perked my heart, and then it was like okay. But she was happening to wear a blue dress in that picture uh, that I saw, and I was like, whoa. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and then from there, um, like I said, I, I I was looking for a while, and uh, literally, I just wasn't 
healed within myself to um, to approach her. And I happened to uh, realize that actually I had a revelation of uh, God was letting me know like, hey, um, I won't allow you to heal until you forgive yourself for one. Mm. And then for two, um, listen to my voice. Mm. You know, because I was finding people that I thought was for me that wasn't for me at that time and it wasn't for me at all and I found myself bleeding on them mm. and leaving them hurt or them leaving me worse than where I was um, so he was like you need to get all this stuff straight in your life first mm. and then I will allow you to love me. That was powerful you guys I hope you have your journals and you're writing those things down in order for him even as a man but this goes both ways to find the love and to attract the love that you desire, you have to first start by forgiving yourself. I believe you cannot love anybody more than you love God and then that you love yourself. Because that's how that's where your love like vibration or your love value is going to be at. It's going to be at the level that you love yourself. So many people are trying to attract people, but they don't love themselves. And then so they wonder why they keep picking up trash or why they keep attracting people that don't love them the way that they desire. So I want to dig into our first date, right? Because it, it sounds good. We were like, you know, he says, this is his word, y'all. He says that immediately God told him I was his wife. Yeah. And so... I was like, well, sir, God didn't tell me. How about that? Okay. <laughs> so God had to confirm it with me. So our first date was not great. We go to a restaurant. First of all, I was on like this health kick and I wasn't eating any meat. Shout out to all the vegans out there. I love y'all. I don't know how y'all do it. Praise God for y'all. Okay. So I was on this health kick. So I was already kind of like, what am I going to eat? How is he going to perceive me? Right? And I had these walls up. In one of the episodes, I'm going to talk to you guys about boundaries because boundaries are very important. But the thing about boundaries is they need to be breathable and not a wall. So I had a wall up. And so I didn't even give you a chance. No. And I was rude. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> a lot of it are rude. And when we left that date, how did you kind of, how did you feel? I can share how I felt, but what were your, because you said that God told you. So what do we do when we believe God has told us something, but it does not pan out the way we believe it should? Yeah. Um, well, first, let me fix when I say God has told me, because it was God that told me, but it was like an angel of the Lord that spoke. Mm -hmm. Because if we say God has told us something, his, just his voice alone will probably scare us to death. So that's why he uses his angels to go out to deliver the messages that he want to get across. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I mean when I say God has spoken or God has told me um, and that nature. Um, but yet when it doesn't work out, I mean, it was terrible. I mean, it was heartbreaking because now I want to shake my finger at God or shake my fist at him and blame him for everything I went through uh, because it wasn't going out the way it was supposed to. So I, I was like, man, at least I tried. Mm -hmm. You know, at least I gave an effort. Um, and you promised me you'll do this or you showed me you'll do this and I'm following your instructions. Um, and everything was fine. He just was like, what would you do if it didn't happen the way you expected mm, it to happen? You sir, know, because you gonna I, preach I or what? You gonna preach? I, I don't. You should. Go. <laughs> you should go and you it up to it. <laughs> but it was like, what would you do though? I mean, a lot of times when things don't happen our way, we get so upset, we get so uptight, and and we're just we'll do anything. But to be the truth of the matter, if, if you want me to talk about the flesh, if it happened my way. I think I would have took you home that night, you know, you know, and be, and, and be adults, you know, and that's just being real. We grown on Tuesday with Tamika. That's just being real. So that wall that she put up actually made me go further, you know, and want to chase a little bit more.
because a lot of times God won't just give you what you want. You know, you got to work for it. And what were you willing to sacrifice? What were you willing to do? What are you willing to give up to make this happen? And I was willing to sacrifice my flesh. You know, I, I didn't want to get upset and, and angry and just guard her. No, no. I knew if I was able to just to touch her one time, and I did, and she, she snatched her purse and put it in the other hand so I couldn't hold her hand. But I knew if I was able to just touch her for some reason, I don't, I'm, well, that's my... That's my That's the spiritual man. Yeah, but it's also my uh, my love language. Mm. It's touch. So it was like if I can just touch her and let her feel what I feel, mm. I, I think we'll make that connection. Hey TWT fam, we sure hope that you're enjoying this week's episode. We're gonna take a quick commercial break and introduce you to one of our community spotlights. But come right back. We'll see you soon. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Jamie Newton Knight. I am the married mother of four amazing children. I have a 27 year old daughter, a 20 year old son, a nine year old son, and a six year old daughter. Yes, that's their ages. They are all my biological children, but we are in a blended family. And I am the owner of Blended Black Family and the Cooperative Co Parenting Blend, where I teach moms and co parenting relationships how to take charge of their lives by redefining motherhood on their own empowering terms, balance their families, and co-parent with ease. My mission is to dispel the myth that black parents can't co-parent without the drama. We're not having people believe in that because we can. And I do this through my online coaching as well as my mom's retreats. So please check me out at www.thecocoblend.com. See you later, guys. Thank you. Listen, and there was so much that he just said. So if you're taking notes, there's a couple of things that I need you to write down. And then I'm going to give you a faith action step really quickly. The first thing is when, when things don't go your way or as you believe God has promised them, you still have to have faith. Yeah. Faith without works is dead. We It's not just enough to pray and speak in tongues and just be no we have to there's some work that comes involved so make sure that you're putting in the work faith action step for today's episode i want you to write down all the promises of god all the things that god has promised you concerning your love life right maybe god told you that your husband your wife was coming this year maybe god told you you know, that you will be able to be healed to love again. Whatever those promises are, I want you to write them down and ask God when, how, and why, right? It is so important for us to know the why of a matter. So just like Paul, it's so interesting because God had already, because this was a God thing, you guys, God had already started to work in me. So I left that day feeling like, basura for my just trash right i was not happy with the way i behaved because i knew that i was allowing the unhealed version of me to lead the way how many of you guys are allowing your unhealed version to show up in places and situations that prevent you from having and doing all that god has for you so with that i had to really ask for your forgiveness and i had to that next morning, I contacted him and I apologized for my behavior because I knew that I was operating from an unhealed place. I think one way that we really become healed to love again is we have to acknowledge us. So many times we're so used to pointing fingers and looking at other people, but I had to say, Tamika, that wasn't right. So we tried again. Yeah, we did. And we, we went on day number two, and I don't want to get emotional, but date number two was literally, you guys, a fairy tale. And today I wore my grandmother's bracelet. And I don't know if you know this, but I wore it on the date uh, because my grandmother had so much grace. She had so much love. She was everything that I had hoped and prayed to be one day. And so I wanted to embody her spirit. Not in like no weird, creepy, like ghost way. <laughs> but I knew that I had to be 
soft. You know, on social media, there's like this debate, debate about the soft life. And I am a very strong, powerful woman, but I can also be soft. And so I want it to be both. I want it to be soft and I want it to be strong. So I invited my grandma on a date with us. <laughs> And it was it was funny because I prayed and I said, Lord, I'm tired, right? I had already gotten rid of all the like dudes that was texting. Like I was just done with that. Like even before he approached me, I had cut everything off. And I didn't realize that God was preparing me for him to come into my life. But before the date, I prayed and I said, Lord, if this is your will, he'll bring flowers. <laughs> No flowers. <laughs> but yeah. he came with this box. And I still have the box today. We actually used the box for our wedding, for the yeah, cards yeah. for our wedding. But he had this box and it had like my favorite scriptures, y'all. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Proverbs 30. It was like, I'm like, who? okay, Lord, who is this man? <laughs> So yeah. the box and inside of the box, do you remember what you, you don't remember, so let me tell the people. Keep telling. Okay. <laughs> so he had a watch. Yeah. He had a workout shirt because he knew that I was working out. He had a blouse because I was already on the speaking circuit and I was speaking at schools and stuff. So he had like a shirt for me to, you know, the professional shirt. He had a purse. And there was something else I can't remember. But he had all the, he did not have flowers, but he had everything that I needed. Did you catch that? Sometimes we are looking for what we want, but God is going to give us what we need. It was so powerful. And then he said out of his mouth, y'all, some women expect flowers on a date. You deserve a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> My boy has some game. My boy has some game, okay? <laughs> so that literally was my confirmation because he intentionally paid attention to me. I, I need the ladies, le lean in, I I lean in, C come here. I need you to understand when a man desires you and he wants you, he understands the complexities of you you do not have to be perfect. I, unpopular opinion, people tell us you have to be whole and healed to enter into a relationship. Neither one of us were. But we together became the ointment and the medicine that each other needed to heal parts of us that had not been healed. He intentionally paid attention to me and knew exactly what I needed and he literally, we, we like led into our life partnership from that day forward. Yeah. There were more things that happened on the day. Do you remember? I don't want to tell it all. Uh, that or were happened. you just so happy that I was holding your hand at this point? Hey. <laughs> it was all the above. She touched me. <laughs> oh, to be touched. <laughs> yeah, no, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of symbolic things that happened on the day. Um, the conversations were great. Uh, I think we both had salad. We did. And, you, and you, I think I went in those a little bit of meat too. Because <laughs> I was still on my vegan too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I partook in your salad. <laughs> <laughs> we ate caviar. It. Yeah. Right? Actually, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think uh, we actually walked on the beach uh, uh, later on after that. So the restaurant was looking over the beach in Redondo. Uh, from there we took a walk on the beach and had a couple of conversation and um, from that point she was cold I gave her my shirt yes gave her my shirt um, and then we proceeded to walk back and as we got from the sand um, from the sand to the pavement I actually I took my uh, I had a towel I went and grabbed the towel and I started washing her feet off um, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. Fairy tale. That's gonna be another lifetime movie, okay? <laughs> yeah. So uh, 
and that's actually one of the things that we did in our, our wedding, wedding ceremony. ceremony. Actually, we washed each other's feet. Um, so we kind of referred back to what we did before and split mm, it up. So. Here's a good teachable moment. How you start is how you'll finish. Yeah. We need to make sure that we're starting things first and foremost with God, but we need to make sure that the way that we lead into relationships, and this isn't only just romantic relationships, it's business partnerships, it's, uh, you know, just work, like all types of different things. How you start a thing is how it's going to end. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's, and just to go back another step of giving you my shirt, um, I know a lot of you guys thinking, oh, he just took his shirt off and, um, that was also symbolic. That was actually showing her that I will be your covering and that I will cover you, you know. Um, yes, it was cold outside, so no matter what temperature, no matter what we mm. go through, it's letting you know that, hey, um, I will cover you. So, yeah. Don't do that! <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, there is so much more to this story. I mean, we have literally just touched the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Together, me and this man have eight beautiful children. Yes. And we are journeying, journaling, journeying, journeying <laughs> through life, yes. healing not only ourselves, healing our children, and we want you to join this journey with us. Absolutely. If you have not already, share this with someone. Remember, healing happens in community. I have something special for you today. I created the prayers for your future husband because what I forgot to tell you is six weeks before he slid into my DMs, I would journal to him every single night and I would pray. I did not know it was him, but faith without works is dead. I want you to download your free prayers for your future husband guide and I will see you next week. Remember, live a life to inspire and not impress. Lift as you climb, turn your trials into treasures and allow God to fully restore you. Until next week, bye-bye. Hey, thank you for joining us for another episode of Tuesday with Tamika. We want to take this conversation outside of this platform and on to our community. We want to invite you over to Tuesday with Tamika, becoming fearlessly her membership. Her stands for healed, elevated, and restored. We meet twice a month. I am one of your expert coaches and I coach you through life's challenges as well as I invite other experts into our community to talk to us about finances, love, relationships, writing books, all sorts of things. So go on over to TuesdayWithTamika.com, click that Join the Fearlessly Her membership and join the community.